good morning, everyone. Uh, and thanks to, uh, to Peter, because uh, I'm going to be able to build on uh, a few of the ideas that, that Peter shared in the last talk. I've worked at Dunhumby for 13 years now. I started as a graduate, and uh, at the time we were 60 people big, and we are now almost 2,000 people. And so I've been very lucky to be part of a company that's really tapped into uh, what we now call uh, big data. And what I'm going to do is I'll explain a little bit about what we do um, and, uh, and how we do it. So we work with, we're owned by Tesco in the UK, but we work with retailers around the world. Um, and largely, we're most famous for grocery retail. So we work with uh, the likes of Tesco, Kroger, Group Casino, Metro in Canada, uh, and all of their suppliers. So the Procter & Gamble's of the world, the Unilever's, Crafts, Coke, those sorts of things. What does it truly mean to be customer-centric? And what role does data have within the organization? Uh, and we started working with Tesco uh, back at the days when they launched Club Card. And, um, and I want to sort of jump on this idea of you know, learning and failing fast, those sorts of things. And, and Tesco's reflection at the time was, we've got all of this great data coming out of Club Card <coughs> that we are managing in a operational way. We've got IT teams managing this data. And this was back in the mid-90s. And actually, the reason why we're called Dunn and Humby, it was a husband and wife team called uh, Clive Humby and Edwina Dunn. Uh, and they approached Tesco at a conference like this and said, we think we can do something different with your data. We think we can use the data as a real listening post for customers. We can use it to understand customers. And Tesco's mission statement from the early 90s was no one tries harder for customers, earning their lifetime loyalty. And actually, data has a very, very big role to play in uh, delivering on that promise. And I'll take you through a little bit as to how we do that. I think it's really interesting that, that we've got this kind of um, phrase now of, uh, of, of big data. And I'm trying to encourage our sort of PR guys and, uh, and those sorts of things to say, actually, we should be talking about big insight. And I'll talk a little bit more about actually how you take lots of data and turn it into something meaningful. But once you start with uh, uh, data and you, you add a layer of intelligence to it, you've got to do something with it. Data on its own is, is, is worthless. You've actually got to turn it into real value for a business, for a customer. So we talk about two things, one of which is personalizing the experience, actually using that data. So once we get super nerdy about who buys Coke, who buys Pepsi, uh, who buys it on promotion, who buys the two liter, who buys the six pack, you know, those sorts of things. And actually once we know that, we can use that to build better stores, better shelves, better promotional plans, those sorts of things. We can communicate to customers in better ways. How do you make the whole organization, or how do you make marketeers more analytical? Uh, and I think one of the learnings we've got is that actually uh, what we should do, be doing with data is helping the entire organization consume data in a, uh, in a way that allows them to make better decisions. And then the, we hold our feet to the fire by saying actually uh, the bit that we should do is deliver measurable value. So actually driving change, but making sure we are measuring ourselves to say actually are we doing a better job for customers? Are customers responding and, and how are they doing so? We have to focus on real behaviours. Um, we'll talk to many marketeers and they will start by running focus groups. And they'll go, I want to understand what customers are saying, I want to understand why, what are they thinking? And we have case study after case study that proves that what customers say and what customers do are two very, very different things. So actually we believe that most marketeers need to start in the middle. We'll talk to the finance guys that will say, actually, what we need to do is understand profitability of different stores, different behaviours, those sorts of things, and then work back to how do we get customers to do more of those profitable things. Truly listen to customers and build their loyalty. You have to understand them. You have to understand how you cultivate their loyalty. How do you respond to their needs? And actually, by doing that, profits will grow, sales will grow. And one of the ways I think um, we get creative with data is by... Again, looking at the data that a retailer has through a very different lens, through a customer lens. So take this um, sort of pre-packed uh, set of organic carrots here. The kind of data that a retailer will typically have will be, you know, how much does it weigh, what's its shelf life, what's its size, you know, um, uh, what's the shrinkage on it, wastage on it, all those sorts of things. Kind of the operational data that is absolutely essential to running a good retailer. We talk about data from a customer angle and say, actually, how can we use the data on who's buying what, to actually generate this idea of you are what you eat. And actually by looking at every single product and coding every product from the way customers view them, to actually infer things about how customers are shopping, actually which customers are which. 
to actually, if I buy a lot of this kind of stuff, maybe it does mean I'm more healthy oriented, maybe it does mean I'm more convenience oriented. If actually I'm buying more of the finer uh, product within Tesco, maybe that means I'm more upmarket, I'm more an adventurous foodie, those sorts of things. There's a lot you can infer by looking at data in creative ways to actually pull different insights out about the customers that are doing the buying. Um, one of the um, phrases that I really like is when we talk about democratizing the data. So uh, lots of companies have BI tools and all those sorts of things. Um, and these are some screenshots of uh, a product that we call the shop. And actually what that allows us to do is to put data in a pre-planned format into the hands of decision makers. Um, and, and I just want to sort of dwell on that for a second, because if you think we might have one analyst working with, I don't know, say 30 people within Tesco, and actually if the dependencies on that analyst to come up with the results every time, there's a big bottleneck there. Whereas actually if we can put simple to understand meaningful insights into the hands of 30 people and actually remove the human element from it, the analytical element from it, by pre-planning that and putting that in easy to answer format, actually you know what, we're democratizing that data and allowing anyone within the organization to access it, to say actually, um, you know, how can I make my decisions a little better? What insight do I need uh, in, order to, um, in order to make those decisions? Uh, and that sort of challenges the business model a little bit so again, we talk to lots of commercial guys, you know what, well, the data that I've got on my customers, it's, uh, you know, it's proprietary to us, it's uh, those sorts of things, why would I give it away, why would I sell that to uh, a Coke or a Pepsi? And importantly, we give Coke data to Pepsi, and we give Pepsi data to Coke, those sorts of things. You know, if you're going to truly understand customers in your category, you have to be able to be open, uh, and you have to listen to uh, customers, whatever they buy. What's the products and the brands and the categories that engage every single customer? And if you think about the data that we've got from Clubcard, uh, we will know uh, what I buy, uh, when do I buy it, which products do I really engage with. And actually that should and does have a huge impact on how we communicate to you. So one of the, the other famous examples that we'll do, this is a, a Kroger example, is actually when we engage a customer, the promotional discounts we'll give, those sorts of things, will be tailored and tested to every individual customer. Uh, and I really like this idea, you know, we, we um, preach, test and learn. Uh, and so actually really engaging with customers, which customers like coupons, which customers like what types of coupons. Uh, you know, points versus uh, pounds versus pence, uh, you know, different mechanics, those sorts of things. You know, this is one big sort of cycle of test and learn in terms of how do we engage customers, which products, which discounts. Um, and you know, which customers should we engage with in just different channels altogether. The world of retail is changing. Um, and actually, you know, as we move to more sort of uh, uh, digital devices, more people shopping online, more digital devices in store, those sorts of things. You know, we as consumers are, um, I think we're used to seeing a store like this. And we're used to, as uh, marketeers, designing stores like this. Which products go where, those sorts of things. But actually the world is changing. You know, whether it's virtual stores on subway stations, whether it's mobile applications, those sorts of things. If you think about the difference that makes to the shopping experience, actually I've got to condense what is 50,000 products in a store that are nicely laid out into you know, what might be a million plus products into the palm of my hand. There's a real challenge for us in the next decade to you know, blend what is uh, you know, a user experience, data, all those sorts of things to actually uh, be creative about how do we deliver a store in the palm of someone's hand. And the data that uh, retailers hold on customers uh, can and should be used to help customers shop, help customers save. You know, the nature of a good shopping trip doesn't want really change. Customers want to find what they're looking for, they want to find it simply and quickly, they want to find it at a great price, they increasingly want to know what other customers think about it. So actually, why don't we leverage data to help customers? We've been using data for years and years to help retailers, but actually we haven't really put it in the hands of customers to help them. So why wouldn't we help customers understand how healthily they're eating, those sorts of things? So in bringing, um, bringing that data to life for customers in a, in a helpful way. I could give you many examples as to how the, the different data sets could be combined, those sorts of things. But importantly, I want to go back to what I said at the start, which is um, the only asset a retailer or a company has is the loyalty of their customers. You, know, you build loyalty by building trust. And so actually, whilst this may seem very big brother, actually I think there is um, there's a real point to be made here, which is, um, actually being transparent with customers as to how we're going to use data, how we're going to bring it together, is a very, very important part of uh, you know, this big data industry that we are um, operating in.
And we started working with Kroger in, uh, in 2003, so about the sort of time here where um, you know, the blue lines are, uh, are negative. Um, and they were getting hammered by Walmart in the US. Um, and this is their sales growth um, ever since. Uh, and I, I really, again, just to build on this idea of um, you know, challenge the organization to fail, uh, the, the starting brief from Kroger's senior team was, tell us what we don't know. And for a company like Dunhumby, that is such a fantastic kind of brief to say, right, let's just jump in. Let's drink from the fire hose. What is it that Kroger really need to understand about their data? And then, importantly, what do they do about it? Um, so everyone sort of knows and associates Dunhumby with, uh, with Tesco in the UK, but actually some of the, the case studies and the results we've got around how does a business put customers at the centre of what it does, how does it make better decisions, you know, I think things like this, um, and you, you, know, you listen to sort of Dave Dillon, their CEO, talk at their investor calls and stuff, you know, just listen to the passion that he has about putting customers, listening to the data, those sorts of things, you know, I think really shows that actually... Um, you know, when you put um, when you put that sort of data into the hands of uh, people within the business and use it to make better decisions, it can and should have a, a dramatic impact on, uh, on on how a business operates and their sales. And that's it. Thanks very much.